that battery charger. How cool is that? I bet you it actually really does charge a battery, unlike all the new crap. Bet you these leads, solid copper. Now that is neat looking. It actually works. So in today's video, I'm just gonna clean it up. You know, take it apart, take a look on the inside. I'm sure being as old as it is, there's gonna be some pretty neat electronics, some creative electronics inside here. So cables and stuff are all pretty decent shape. You know, these are your low voltage cables, 12 volts. I mean, it wouldn't matter if you touch that bare copper wire, it won't do anything. I mean, it's the same as touching right there. Um, the power cord looks actually pretty decent, not too bad. Still nice and flexible. There is some dry spots where I'm getting a little bit of cracking. Does have the original plug, it looks like, or at least an old plug pre 70s, but the rivets are getting kind of loose. And so these are wiggling around pretty good. Hook the positive to the positive. Hook that, my needle jumped up. So this 12 volts. And we turn it to 12 volts over here. Fan kicks on, it's putting seven amps in. Crank it all the way up. It's dumping 30, that's what that battery where it wants. Had a test the other day and it was putting in like 40, 50. I think it's rated for 60 or something like that. It's weird, I actually see light bulbs in there. And so I think those are part of the circuitry, I think. There's no other reason why I would have two light bulbs in there. Nice thick layer of untouched dust. There's one light bulb, there's the other light bulb. I have no idea what they do in the circuit, but they have to do something. First I thought they were just for this, for this uh, needle and they had just fallen out of like the little case or something, but it doesn't look like that's supposed to have a light bulb at all. And this thing has been repainted before, as you can tell by the aluminum nating plate being just painted right over the top. So from what I can see this going on, it looks like, so this is our power wire coming in. This is our ground. This is our positive out. This right here comes off the power line power side so this is like a um a little uh bimetallic disc or whatever that if it draws too much current this will trip so that's your limiter and that just comes looks straight over to the timer switch right here feeds down in there these plates right here um you see like three or four of them in there uh, this is going to be your rectifier your diodes Old school, I mean, that's huge compared to what we could probably come up with today. But that's gonna convert your AC to your DC. Um, this long tube right here is probably a resistor, I think. Um, looks like we have a capacitor hanging out right there. Pretty basic, there shouldn't be that much to it. And then underneath these plates, there's going to be your coil that just turns, that allows you to have enough amp, that turns 120 volts into 12 volts, so there's 10 wraps of super heavy gauge wire. And then this right here, this round thing is just a, like a starter solenoid on an old truck or old car. It's just a solenoid, um, and you can hear it clink when you turn it on. Um, and then we got our fan motor right here. D just keeps everything cool. I swear I heard that ting in something, but oh, maybe I heard it just barely. So it might be dinging something. Maybe not. Spins nice and freely, but we'll put some lube on it. So we're going to have our coil right here. This should be our rectifier. You can see that solenoid right now, it's plain as day, just a regular like 
starter type solenoid. But I don't understand why there's two bulbs there. Um, I don't know if one's for the 12 volt circuit and one's 6 volt. Well, they both turn on for the 12 volt. I have not tested it on 6 volt. If somebody could find me a wiring diagram, you know, not for this exact same thing, but the way they have this set up with the light bulbs or something to actually charge the battery, I'd be interested in seeing it. Now this looks just like a regular, like 1156. No, it's a 1073. So it probably draws more or less watts than an 1156. Does this one over here say what it is? A GE 313 or 313. That's about all I can do in there. Everything's nice and clean and all the connections look good. I got duplicate decals right here. They say do not start um, cars with dead batteries. This one's in really poor shape, so I just wanted to see how well it removed. Um, this one is in poor shape as well, and masking around it is going to look just as bad as me applying it later. So I'm going to actually gonna remove it because there's actually two coats of paint. I don't know, it just looks crappy. And I almost wonder. If these were stuck on after the second coat of paint, because I almost see two coats of paint underneath it. So I wonder if this was like taken back to the factory and reserviced and they repainted it real fast and they, you know, to just resell it or something. And then they just slap new stickers on it because there's no paint over these where there is paint like over this thing on the side. And you can clearly see, I don't know, you can see two different, slightly two different shades of paint. So, we'll take it off. Maybe stretching it. Oh, that's okay. And if I clean these up, I can reapply these just with some contact cement. I wasn't planning on taking it down to bare steel. Didn't need to. But the paint, sometimes when you sand paint, it doesn't feather nice. And so this paint was not feathering nice. It was actually leaving an edge. And so that's all going to be covered and around there. But So I had to go bare steel on everything. So we got a wax and grease removed. So since we're bare steel, we got to give it some primer. Where if you didn't go bare steel, you could probably get away with just um, putting a top coat of paint on it. We're going to use a uh, red oxide. Okay. I'm actually going to use an oil base. Difference is like rust oleum stuff like that is what's called like an alkyd enamel um it's an oil base it takes forever to dry it's a little bit more durable than like a lacquer base something like um krylon or something generally i prefer something like krylon because it it dries in five minutes and you're done but we're gonna put this on and go from there tip spray painting so you don't get fish eyes and stuff like that where you don't Wrinkle your finish is the very first coat. Just do so light. Don't even coat everything. 
And then let that tack up. I mean, that's not coated at all. Let that tack up. And then I'll spray again over the top of that. It'll bond good. And it won't actually put so much solvent because sometimes the solvent in the paint will lift your primer and everything else with these spray paints. Move this out of the way. Okay, we're not going to repaint the front of this because this is screen printed. This is all screen printed on there. You're never going to get it right unless you want to make that whole decal again or something. So you got to be careful of how you clean it. One of the best cleaners out there and cheapest for how much it compared to cleaners is gasoline. This is actually ethanol free gasoline. And I find that generally doesn't harm print. Or if you use something like acetone or something, that'll actually damage everything. So we're just going to work gasoline around until you get it clean. If gasoline's not strong enough, then we start moving up to things like acetone and stuff like that and testing that. That's about as good as she's going to get. But I do need to polish the plastic right here. I think I'm going to hammer one little dent out right here and then do some little, I'm going to see if I can have a white that this is this dirty, you know, it's hard to find a white that's aged. It has like the yellow to it, but if I can, I'm going to touch up these bigger marks. Um, the red panel covers up these whole edges. I've been mixing up some custom paint, just kind of touching up some of the little dings and scratches on there. You know, from the camera, it probably looks amazing. You can see it though. Um, pushed out a dent right there, and just little scratches all over. Probably 7,500 little dings. The tag is still kind of rough shape, but it is what it is. Um, this thing was repainted red at one point, and I think the original color was actually the black. So I can see the black poking through. You'll never clean it down to the black without taking the black off. You can see even right here, see the blacks come off and get it back. I don't mind the red. Um, if you strip it down and try just to scrape off the top, you'll always have little spots that you mess up. So I'm probably better off just actually leaving it alone but I'm going to 
use some red and just kind of touch up around some of these letters and stuff just to make it look just a, a little bit more visually appealing. Um, I'm going to use a I'm going to use a Krylon, which is a fast drying, which is like a lacquer based paint versus an oil that I did on everything else. But this will just dry really fast. And if I mess up, um, you can just instantly wipe away with gas on a rag without damaging anything. I've hand painted the tag, but of course I got some brush strokes now, so I'll have to wait till that fully dries, and then I'll just kind of scuff it up, give it all one sheen, because you can't get in between every letter. It's not perfect, but as good as it's going to get. Getting everything mounted back up. It's weird. All the screws on this are, look at that, the pry bar screws. You got to use your pry bar to install them. Hmm, must be an old timey thing. So we're going to swap this out. Looking on the inside of the machine, there's actually a ground wire. So I look closer in there and there's actually a ground wire just sitting right in there. But that was never a ground wire plug. So let's swap it out for a ground wire plug and cut off a couple inches. It's really stiff right here, but then it's, then it's all flexible down here so I have a feeling this got hot at one point and made the rubber stable but the rest of the cord is actually in really good shape and I'll strip it back and then I'll look at the insulation I mean because this is just the outer insulation what you really want to do is look at the inner insulation I see some mild like cracking on the inner insulation just a little bit but it will strip it back to here and see how the wires look on the inside of here because they look great in there nice and flexible not cracking not dry rotting so, go from there. So we do have some breakage of the insulation where it gets bent a lot and where it get, got dragged across the floor. Other spots, the cord's just beautiful and no problems. Really don't want to use any, lose any length. So we're just going to repair it. I mean, we could lose four or five inches and recrimp a new end on it, but there's no corrosion inside there. There's nothing wrong with this copper. So what we're going to do is this stuff is um, 2155 Temflex. It's like a self vulcanizing tape. It's kind of cool stuff for electrical. It um, vulcanizes slash sticks to itself. When it stretches, so I can fill in this spot. So the idea is you stretch it. That's just kind of gap filling because I'm going to put some um, heat shrink over the top of that. Clean up these connection spots, clean this up, put it back together. 
This is solid copper. It actually even says on it, solid copper. You're not going to get nicer clamps than, than these. So I found a nice vintage Hubble plug. It's in good condition with the ground. What do you think? You like it? It look good? Is it safe? Here, test it. Yep, ginger approved. There you go. We'll leave that on you. You can walk it. Yeah? Okay, what else we got? We got these? What do you think of these? Huh? We clamp these to you? We clean these up so the connections and everything are nice and clean so they'll conduct electricity well. And you can see the repairs on both of them. It's actually more rigid than it was. Won't bend there. Should not open up to copper again, but we'll be good. What do you think? How's it look? Did we do a good job? You don't care? Care less about a battery charger? A ginger. You're looking for balls and snacks, huh? Balls and snacks. That's all we care about. Hey, you see the ball up here? Can you get it? Go ahead, get it. Go ahead, get it. Get it. You got it. We got it. What do you think of it? Not too shabby? Yeah?